freediving in this sort of brutal and beautiful place is just breathtaking. Antarctica, the southernmost continent on Earth. It has no permanent human inhabitants, but for Will Glendinning, there was nowhere else he'd rather go. I started freediving four or five years ago and had a fascination with Antarctica uh, long before that. Freediving is one of the most natural ways of exploring water. It's one of the most brutal and uh, remote locations on Earth and uh, it just had a natural appeal, so we thought we'd go and explore. But to get there would take two years of planning before Will could set sail from Chile with two friends and the crew of three on the Pelagic. Day one and we finally set sail from Port of William and we are about 60 miles from Cape Horn and then once we get to Cape Horn we carry on over Drake Passage uh, to Antarctica. We had to wait a while because it was blowing 70 knots at Cape Horn which is uh, best avoided. We waited for that weather system to clear and then we set off. And four days and four nights of this, sailing 24-7 and then we should hit ice, we should hit Antarctica. Their destination was Marguerite Bay about as far south as it was possible to go before the sea ice would stop the boat. We were sailing for four days and four nights before we saw anything. Uh, we then, for the first time, saw something sort of appear over the horizon, which we knew was an iceberg, we could see the faint outline. Then as we got closer, I mean, I tell you, nothing prepares you. No video, no photos, no words, frankly, that can do justice to the scale of these things. Some of them the size of buildings, other ones the size of countries massive great lumps of ice sort of floating through the ocean. It's just breathtaking. As they navigated the icebergs, they had to keep a 24-hour watch, including using radar at night. After six days and nights at sea, they finally arrived at land. It was really quite bizarre. Uh, just, you have to understand how big this place is. And there are no trees, there are no um, you know, buildings, there's nothing that gives you a sense of perspective or scale. So you can be looking at a cliff, you know, a towering 20 storey high lump of ice towering off the, uh, the end of a glacier, thinking it's sort of two, three, four hundred metres away. It's actually two or three miles away. There's just no sense of scale or perspective. Of course, the reason they've come all this way is to get in the water. And though initially disappointed by the lack of visibility on his first dive, Soon, Will is able to explore the icy underwater landscape. It's the most bizarre, most ridiculous freediving I've ever done. And uh, to freedive in amongst all that ice, under the icebergs, and you know, tunnels of ice, these weird, strange caves of ice, sort of blue ice, white ice, clear ice. I mean, it was just, it's just incredible. It was just the most amazing place. The biggest risk we discovered uh, was the risk that came from the ice. So. Icebergs are very delicately balanced, so if they suddenly decide to fall over and you're under one of them, it's game over really. Very few things make any noise in Antarctica. I mean, it's just one of the most silent places. But the one thing that does make a huge noise is the sound of, sort of ice carving off glaciers into the ocean. Now, what we weren't expecting is what that sounds like underwater. So if you're, imagine, 15, uh, 20 metres down underwater and uh, suddenly this almighty clap of noise just sort of resonates around you. You've got no idea whether it's coming from, you've got no idea whether it's sort of 50 metres away or five miles away. Um, yeah, it wakes you up. Free diving in Antarctica perhaps isn't for everybody. If your idea of great free diving is crystal clear warm water then you know, Antarctica is not going to be for you. But if your affinity with water is anything like mine, freediving in a place which is um, defined by water, has been created by water, and in a large part still made of water, you know, it seems like a natural pilgrimage to me. And in the end, the time we had was so short, and I have to go back.